Class 11 Accountancy Numerical Problem Solutions Presented by Eduxit.com In this video, we are going to provide Bank Reconciliation Statement Unfavorable Balance of Cash Book Solutions Problem 13 Solution The problem statement is as follows. On December 31st, 2000 plus, the cash book of Mittal Brothers showed an overdraft of 6,920 rupees. From the following particulars, prepare a bank reconciliation statement and ascertain the balance as per the passbook. 1. Debited by bank for 200 rupees on account of interest on overdraft and 50 rupees on account of charges for collecting bills. 2. Checks drawn but not in cash before December 31st, 2000 plus for 4000 rupees. 3. The bank has collected interest and has credited 600 rupees in the passbook. 4. A bill receivable for 700 rupees previously discounted with the bank has been dishonored and debited in the passbook. 5. Checks paid into bank but not collected and credited before December 31st, 2000 plus amounted to 6000 rupees. Before we proceed with the analysis of these particulars, let us first recap about why there is a need for reconciliation. By preparing the bank reconciliation statement, we get an idea about why there is a difference between the cash book and the pass book. The difference could be due to timing difference on recording the transaction, errors made by the business or the bank. Few reasons of the timing difference are checks issued by the business but not yet presented for the payment. When the business issues a check to the supplier or creditor, they are immediately entered on the credit side of the cash book. The supplier or creditor has to encash this check by presenting it in the bank. In some cases, the creditor or supplier may not present this check immediately in the bank. So, when the bank statement is received by the firm, as this check is not yet presented by the creditor or supplier, this will not be there in the bank statement. This is one reason. The next reason is, Checks paid into the bank but not yet collected. When the business receives checks from its customers or debtors, they are immediately recorded in the debit side of the cash book. So, the cash book shows more amount to be available in the bank. These checks could be from a bank which is not in the same city or town. Sometimes, the business might have an account in one branch and the check could be from a different branch. In such cases, the bank may not have collected this check amount by the time the bank statement is received by the firm. So, there will be difference in the cash book and the passbook balances. This is one more reason. The next reason is direct debits made by the bank on behalf of the customer. Sometimes, the bank deducts the amount for various services from the business bank account. The business will not be aware of these deductions until the bank statement is received by the firm. Some of the examples of such deductions are check collection charges, interest on overdraft, etc. As the business does not know about these direct debits, they will not be recorded in the business cash book. So, obviously, there will be difference between the business cash book balance and the bank passbook balances. This is one more reason. The next reason is checks deposited or bills discounted or dishonored. When the check is received by the business, it deposits this check in the bank and debits this check amount in the bank column of the cash book. In some cases, this check will be dishonored and the amount is debited in the bank passbook. Due to the timing difference, the business does not know about the check being dishonored. So, there will be no entry for the dishonored check. In other words, as per the cash book, check is successfully encashed and as per the passbook, the check is dishonored. This is applicable for the dishonor of the bills discounted also. The firm will know about this only after the bank statement is received. As a result, the balance as per the cash book and the passbook will be different. This is one more reason. The next reason is interest and dividends collected by the bank. When the bank collects interest and dividend on behalf of the customer, then they are immediately credited to the customer's account. Note here that the term customer refers to our business and not our business customers. In other words, this means that 
the interests or dividends are collected by the bank on behalf of our business but the business will not know about these transactions until the bank statement is received so there will be difference in the cash book balance and the bank passbook balances there are other reasons also but to limit the scope of these differences to this problem let us consider only these five reasons for timing difference also the problem does not have any particulars related to the errors made by the business or by the bank so we will not discuss about these errors here to limit the scope of this recap only to this problem in addition to this the problem requires you to have an understanding of the concept of bill of exchange well you don't really need to have but it's better to have we'll learn more about this in the bill of exchange chapter however just to let you understand this problem let me give you a very brief introduction to the concept of the bill of exchange if you are already familiar with the concept of bill of exchange you can skip this part of the video and directly jump to the analysis of the problem bill of exchange as you know when the business sells goods or services on credit it needs some kind of surety so that the debtors will not avoid payments to avoid the risk of debtors defaulting the payments it sometimes depends on the bill of exchange bill of exchange is prepared as per the negotiable instruments act 1881 few features of the bill of exchange are the bill of exchange must be in writing the maker of the bill must sign it the amount mentioned in the bill of exchange is payable either on demand or on the expiry of a fixed period of time it must be stamped as per the requirement of the law the bill of exchange is generally drawn by the creditor upon its debtor It has to be accepted by the drawee or someone on his behalf. The acceptance by the drawee or someone on his behalf is very important. Otherwise, the bill of exchange is just a draft. Now, assume that the bill of exchange is prepared by the business so as to make the debtor pay the amount after 6 months. But if the business requires this money immediately, it will go to the bank and submits the bill of exchange to the bank. Now, the bank deducts certain amount and pays the bearer of the instrument the amount deducted by the bank is the interest amount in this case it is called as discount for example if the bill of exchange contains 50000 rupees the bank might consider this bill of exchange at a discount of 5000 rupees so the bank pays the business only 45000 rupees now when it comes to recording of these details in the books of account there is 45000 rupees of increase in the bank balance the rule to record any increase in the bank asset is to debit the bank account in this case the bank column of the cash book in addition to this the 5000 rupees is the expense incurred by the business while encashing the bill the rule to record any expense incurred is to debit the corresponding expenses account in this case the discount account will be debited with 5000 rupees for now to keep this discussion within the scope of this problem let's just consider this when we do the problems on bill of exchange we'll learn that the bills receivable account will be credited with 50000 rupees but let's not discuss those details here now you might be wondering why the business exchanges the bill at a lower price isn't it a loss for the business well the purpose of the business is to get the amount immediately so it will be willing to accept this discount as per the business it will help the business to proceed with the running of the day to day operations of the business rather than waiting for a prolonged period until the date of maturity this is the advantage for the business now when it comes to the bank when the date of maturity is arrived the bank will get this total amount from the debtor or the payer there is a brief about the bill of exchange now with this information at our disposal let's now proceed with the analysis of each of these details in the problem here it is given that The overdraft balance as per the cash book of Metal Brothers is 6920 rupees. As you know, the overdraft balance means that there is a credit balance and we call the overdraft of credit balance as unfavorable balance of the cash book. So in this problem, the credit or overdraft balance as per the cash book is given and we need to find the balance as per the pass book. Let us first enter these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let's first write the title as Bank Reconciliation Statement as of December 31st, 2000 plus. Let us have the individual columns for 
serial number, particulars, amount that should be added, and the amount that should be deducted. Let us first write the particulars as overdraft as per the cash book. As this is credit or unfavorable balance in the cash book, we need to write this amount of 6920 rupees in the minus amount column. That completes the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us now take up the next details. Here it is given that 200 rupees of interest on overdraft is debited by the bank. When the bank debits the interest on overdraft balance, the business does not know about this until the bank statement is received. As the business does not know about this interest on overdraft, it will not be credited in the business cash book. So, there will be difference between the business cash book balance and the bank passbook balance. So, we need to deduct this amount from the business cash book balance to get the bank passbook balance. With this analysis at our disposal, let us now proceed with the generalizing of this transaction. Let us first write the serial number. Let us then write the particulars as interest charged by bank on overdraft. Let us then write this amount of 200 rupees in the minus amount column. That completes the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us now take up the next details. Here it is given that the bank has debited 50 rupees in the bank account on account of charges for collecting bills. When the bank is collecting the bills on behalf of the business, it is providing some service to the business. So, it will charge the business for providing this service. This amount charged will be directly debited by the bank in the business passbook. However, the business does not know about these charges until the bank statement is received. As the business does not know about these charges, these charges will not be credited in the business cash book. So, obviously, there will be difference in the business cash book and the bank passbook. So, we need to deduct this amount from the business cash book balance to get the passbook balance. With this analysis at our disposal, let us now proceed with the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us first write the serial number. Let us then write the particulars as charges by bank for collecting bills. Let us then write this amount of 50 rupees in the minus amount column. That completes the recording of these details in the bank reconciliation statement. Let us now take up the next details. In this case, the checks are drawn for 4000 rupees but not encashed. As we have already discussed, the business issues checks to suppliers or creditors and there would be delay by the time the creditors or suppliers encash these checks. However, when these checks are issued to the supplier or creditor, they will be immediately recorded in the business cash book. However, as these checks are not yet encashed, there won't be any corresponding debit entry in the bank passbook. So, obviously there will be difference between the business cash book and the bank passbook. So, we need to add this amount to the business cash book balance to get the passbook balance. With this analysis at our disposal, let us now proceed with the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us first write the serial number. Let us then write the particulars as check issued but not presented for payment. Let us write this amount of 4000 rupees in the plus amount column. That completes the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us now take up the next details. In this case, the bank has collected an interest and created the bank passbook with 600 rupees. When the business has some cash investment or when the business has given loan to someone, the interest on that amount will be created in the bank passbook. However, the business does not know about these interest amounts until the bank statement is received by the firm. So, this amount will not be debited in the business cash book. But the bank passbook will have this interest amount. So, obviously, there will be difference between the business cash book and the bank passbook. So, we need to add this amount to the cash book balance to get the passbook balance. With this analysis at our disposal, let us now proceed with the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us first write the serial number. Let us then write the particulars as interest collected and created by bank. Let us write this amount of 600 rupees in the plus amount column. That completes the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us now take up the next details. Here it is given that the bills receivable for 700 rupees which was discounted with the bank has been dishonored and is debited in the bank passbook. 
As you know, when the bills receivable are matured, the bank will try to collect it from the payer. When the payer fails to pay this amount, the bank will collect this amount from the business itself. So, it will debit the passbook with this amount. However, the business does not know about this dishonored bills payable until the bank statement is received by the business. So, this dishonored bill amount will not be credited in the business cash book. So, obviously, there will be difference between the business cash book balance and the bank passbook balance. So, we need to deduct this amount from the cash book balance to get the passbook balance. With this analysis at our disposal, let us now proceed with the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us first write the serial number. Let us then write the particulars as bills receivable dishonored. Let us now write this amount of 700 rupees in the minus amount column. That completes the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us now take up the next details. Here it is given that Checks for 6000 rupees are paid into the bank but not collected and credited by bank. When the business receives the checks, it will immediately debit these checks amounts in the business cash book and deposits these checks in the bank. However, due to the timing difference, these checks are not yet collected by the bank by the time the bank statement is received by the firm. So, as per the business cash book, the check is collected and as per the bank passbook, the check is not yet collected. So, obviously, there will be difference between the business cash book and the bank passbook. So, we need to deduct this amount from the cash book balance to get the passbook balance. With this analysis at our disposal, let us now proceed with the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. Let us first write the serial number. Let us then write the particulars as checks deposited but not yet cleared. Let us now write this amount of 6000 rupees in the minus amount column. That completes the recording of these details into the bank reconciliation statement. In fact, we have completed the recording of all the details into the bank reconciliation statement. The next step is to find the balance as per the passbook. Now, the total of all the entries in the plus amount column is 4600 rupees. And the total of all the entries in the minus amount column is 13,870 rupees. From 13,870 rupees, if you subtract 4600 rupees, we get 9270 rupees. This is the passbook balance, and now let's record this. Let us first write the particular sales overdraft as per passbook. As we have started with the cash book overdraft balance, we need to write the passbook overdraft balance of 9270 rupees in the plus amount column. Now, the total of all the entries in the plus amount column is 13,870 rupees. Similarly, the total of all the entries in the minus amount column is 13,870 rupees. With that, we have come to the end of this solution. Thanks for watching. Edixit.com is started to promote effective and efficient learning process to help the students with their learning requirements. To watch all our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Also, please click on the bell icon to receive a notification as soon as a new video is published. Please click on the like button if you like this video. Thanks for watching.